All right, what's going on, everybody? Anime Ramble back with another episode. Today, we'll be discussing Kaiju Nabre Chapter 78. What is going on? Well, if you remember where we left off from the last chapter, Kaiju Number 9, he rang the dinner bell, basically summoning his ace in the holes for all of his Kaiju armies. All of these Kaijus that he had emerge received a verified number from the defense forces, essentially making them Dai Kaiju in not just threat, but also in classification as well. So you have Dai Kaijus 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 that have all popped up. If you remember where I have been talking about in my previous chapter videos, I was saying that Kaiju number nine wants to eliminate the infrastructure of Japan and of the defense forces, essentially attacking their water, electricity, communication, transportation, essentially crippling them and separating them, cutting them off from all forms of help and reinforcements. Last chapter we learned that was not the case, okay? His only plan is to eliminate the captains of the defense forces, right? All of the higher ups, including Kikoru, because Kikoru was also thrown in the mix. She is the strongest rookie, um, not just of current era, but she is the strongest rookie in history, passing Hakari, Isayo, Narumi, Mina, passing all of them up, right? Essentially earning her right to be on the front line while all the other rookies are hiding or in the background currently. That does not save her this chapter at all. Let me tell you this, because when she squares off against Daikaiju number 15, she is getting her ass handed to her royally. All right. Now, do I think she's going out? Of course, absolutely not. She's not she's not going anywhere. Do I think that maybe Kafka might have to pop up and inadvertently save her? That would be an interesting character arc and character development for Kikoru, right? Because her whole entire thing that she wants to do is fight on a level to where she is not in need of being rescued. But how this fight is going, I don't see that being a case, okay? Because she's she is losing really, really bad. Now, I could sit here and break down this entire fight. I might mention it a little bit later. But if you can tell by the title of this video, I really do think I'm onto something. I really do think I'm right in this regard because one thing about anime and, and characters in animes is that they tend to have these little quirky sayings that they repeat from time to time, right? You had, famously, you had Naruto with him saying, believe it. If you watch One Piece, you pretty much know all of those characters have something quirky that they say, or for Oda, it's more, it's more so in their laugh. All of his characters laugh in a very distinctive way. Well, here, Matsumoto very cleverly has layered Daikaiju number 15's words and sayings with the previous words and sayings of another character, a character I have been saying this character resembles very heavily. And it actually, in this chapter on page two, the scientist guys actually make that reference. They make the same reference that I have been talking about, how Daikaiju number 15 looks incredibly similar to Kikoru. And that's, I'm sorry, that's just not something that happens regularly. So what you notice with this Kaiju, Daikaiju number 15 is who I'm talking about, is that when she's talking, she's talking in a very condescending way to Kikoru. She continuously calls Kikoru little Kikoru, right? Now commencing the neutralization of little Kikoru. It's useless little Kikoru. Even with your little axe, you're not going to be able to do anything, little Kikoru. So that's something that I picked up on. And I was like, where have I heard this before, right? Like, where, where is this coming from? And then you have to go back to chapter 44 of this manga, where we're first introduced to Hikari, Kikoru's mother, right? Hikari also talk to Kikoru in this way, not condescendingly, but she uses the word little a lot, you guys. And I say a lot, but realistically, we only got one chapter with her and it was a flashback and we didn't get too much after that. But when you look at her and you listen to her on that page, and I'll have it up on the screen for you, this might be a long shot, but look, coincidences don't really happen that often in anime and manga. Everything matters. And the fact that you had the scientist guy for the first time, actually make that reference saying, hey, this Daikaiju looks a lot like Hikoru. Do you think that's a coincidence? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. But here you have Hikari talking to Kikoru, and it was like, you've done it now. Gosh darn it. Have you been a good little girl, you little scamp? Okay. Now, this might be a long shot, but I I'm sorry. I'm just not under the impression that this is, this is a coincidence, right? You have an entity who has the ability of merging with humans and creating new creatures from existing DNA. The fact that Hakari, Kikoru, and Kaiju number 15 all look alike because Kikoru looks like Hakari. And if Kikoru also looks like Kaiju number 15, then we're at a problem right now, all right? It becomes more apparent 
that Kaiju number nine did get a little bit of DNA from Hakari and has used that to create this super soldier of such. Would it be too much of a stretch to say that Kaiju number 15 is the absolute strongest amongst all of the Dai Kaijus? Maybe. We still haven't seen that white Kaiju yet, but it is a possibility. Because when you actually read the fight and you look at everything as it goes down, it's not just the fact that Kikoro is losing, it's the fact that she is being bested at every avenue that she tries to approach her with. And Kaiju number 15 isn't isn't trying. Right, she's blocking the axe with just her knee. She's blitzing Kikoru to a degree that she can barely evade. And when she does evade, she might evade a little bit, but she'll get caught with a scratch. She might evade a little bit, but she gets caught with a leg kick and drilled into the fucking ground. Then you have this amazing scene where you have Kaiju number 15 do something that we haven't seen other Daikaijus do in the past. One, they have a human transformation, something that we haven't seen. Kaiju number 10, when he was first introduced at the Battle of Tachikawa, didn't have a human transformation. So you could make the argument there that when they do have a human host body and they have that ability to transform, it increases their power level many, many, many times over. That's just speculation. What's not speculation is, is that even after... Kaiju number 15 blocked the axe with her knee, drilled Kikoro into the ground, shattering the ground underneath her. She was able to transform back into her kaiju form and let off these massive repetitions of constant fire that the only reason Kikoro was able to evade was because of her suit and having those thrusters on, I guess, her arm and elbow or somewhere like that, right, to get her out of that situation. But it's, it's, it's all piling up on top of each other. She's in that situation, and even even after that, right? Because even though she dodged it, it was stated that her ribs and I think her right lung are just out of commission. Maybe not out of commission, but there is definitely some internal hemorrhaging. Maybe something was punctured. Uh, she is really fighting on borrowed time right now, so it, it is really not a, a situation of can she handle it on her own. She can't, unless something extraordinary happens, right? And I mean something like heavily involving plot armor somebody is going to have to come to try to save her right and it might be kafka in this situation because he's not going to be able to sit back and that might cause a little bit of friction between kikoru and kafka because this is a real big proving ground for kikoru kafka is not supposed to be doing anything so the fact that this is kikoru's proving moment she doesn't want to be saved she has to be able to deal with the situation she says it multiple times during this chapter she has to do this by herself um there's no one there to back her up even though there technically is somebody there to back her up she has all of the rookies that are there waiting to back her up reno you don't have to send kafka you can send reno Reno has the king of the kaiju's numbered weapon suit at her, I'm sorry, at his disposal, so he should be able to use that. Now, I don't know if that's going to be a mismatch situation, because the king of the kaiju's has an ice ability, and this person, uh, kaiju number 15, Kikoru's clone, we haven't seen any elemental abilities. It just seems to be as though she can create massive amounts of explosions, and she also has that body augmentation that we see this chapter. That was something crazy, right? She can augment her body, basically increasing her her mass of her person many times over to create like this hook type of weapon that she's going to be using to deal with Kikoru uh, with next chapter. But I wouldn't be surprised if you had Reno pop up in this situation to try to help. Maybe Reno and Iharu if Kafka is just completely taken off of the table like if Matsumoto was like Kafka is not showing up at all that might be one avenue to have Reno and Iharu both pop in and then you have a 3v1 situation if Matsumoto still wants to have some form of tragedy happen then he, Iharu can bite the dust right if, if, if Iharu is taken out that might jumpstart a lot of their resolve to take their skill to the next level but we just we just simply haven't seen that yet my bet is that Kafka is going to show up because if you have Kafka show up, then Kaiju number nine also has to show up or does he right? Because we still haven't seen that last Kaiju. And if you remember what it looks like, I'm going to throw it up on screen again. This thing is massive in its base form. Like the size that this white Kaiju is, is the size or comparable to what we saw Kaiju number 10 get to after he got beat down initially. And he went basically Super Saiyan and swelled up to enormous proportions um, and then you know you had Hoshin who had to deal with him that way but there's a lot of different possibilities when you sit here on this table and think about it I guess the last part that I really 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 want to talk about is Kikoru and just how much the scientist people 
and the current director general are hyping her up to be, saying that she is the strongest rookie ever in history. She has the potential to pass Isayo, Hakari, and Narumi, um, and will be the face of the defense force in the near future, right? That's great and all, but you pair all of that with the fact that you say that she has they say that she is exceeding all captain class averages, right? That's the important thing to take away from this. Captain class averages, the average of the captain class. If you look at the average of a lot of things, that doesn't necessarily make you good. Yes, she is by far the strongest rookie. Um, I, I, I don't know. Until I see the new and improved Kafka and Reno fight, I cannot say that definitively. I'm sorry. Uh, they are giving a lot of just they're telling us a lot about Kikoru, but she's not producing Right and that could change because if if we find out that Kaiju number 15 is the strongest that Kaiju number nine has ever made well That is a, a much taller task to ask of somebody Than say Kaiju number 11 who might be the weakest of the new Daikaijus, right? It, it's very tough to say but she just has exceedingly high averages, right? She's not excelling in any one particular stat. She's not excelling at close-range combat like Hoshina. She's not excelling at long-range combat. She's not excelling at power input like we see with Narumi. She just has really high average stats, but she's not beating out any of the captains currently in stats. So that is probably why we're seeing so much difficulty coming from Kikoru in this situation. Yes, she's the strongest rookie, but there is a massive gap between rookie strength and captain class strength. Then you have Kikoru in the middle who just has really high averages of stats. She is at a at, she is at a deficit when she's fighting this person and on top of the fact that it just feels like kaiju number 15 just knows the moves that that kikoru is going to use knows the moves and different routes that she's going to take it would make complete sense if this is her half sister slash uh uh <laughs> kaiju aunt number 15 is going to have some form of intimate knowledge of the of the different techniques that Kikoru has at her disposal. What we learned about Kikoru when we were first introduced to her is that her father Isayo trained her from the time that she was a very young person. Like I could imagine right after the death of their mother, she went to start training with her father. Well, I could only imagine that her father and mother also trained together. So, if Kaiju number 9 was able to get his hands on the DNA of Hikari, everything that Isayo taught Hikari was also taught to Kikoru, and vice versa. Kaiju number nine knows the battle techniques of Isayo, so if Isayo taught Hikari his techniques, again, then Kaiju number nine and Kaiju number 15 would both know this. Kaiju number 15 is a hard counter to Kikoru, and I don't see either one of them dying in this situation. I really feel like somebody's gonna intervene more so on the defense forces half than necessarily on the kaiju's half, but <sighs> I think I've rambled on long enough. If you made it to the end, thank you. If you are new, go post ultra and smash that subscribe button. Let's me know you rock with the content that I put out on the channel. Like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video, comment on the video your thoughts about what you think is going on. Do you think I am out of pocket? Do you think that I'm reaching? What do you think is actually going on? Because they're leaning more and more to the fact that Kaiju number 15 is just not like the other Daikaijus. And uh, the fact that she is a lookalike to Kikoru and then subsequently a lookalike to Hikari is just too much for me to actually just chalk it up to coincidence, right? So I think this is going to be a very, very big um, family issue manga, right? <laughs> so I look forward for that development in the next, you know, five, six days. So subscribe if you're brand new and like always until next time, I'm out.